This is a download from BFM 89.9, the business station. World Water Day on BFM 89.9, brought to you by Indah Water Consortium, new life for water. Good morning, this is Race Again, Fila Liu here and back with me is Hetel Doshi, organisational psychologist uh, for the third instalment of the ongoing organisational transformation series, The Butterfly Effect. As yesterday was World Water Day, today we'll be talking about how leaders can go with the flow or they can let themselves drown. Now, there is a lot of chaos and uncertainty in the world right now, uh, even more so in Malaysia as we're experiencing the instability caused by concerns about both COVID-19 and our political situation. So for the leaders, the pressure is on as they need to project a sense of reliability and comfort for their teams. How can leaders best address and acknowledge the potential feelings of fear or doubt in their organisation? Well, Frida, thank you so much for having me here. I think it's, a, it's definitely an extremely volatile if it wasn't already, it's even more so a volatile environment for everyone. Mm. Um, I, I guess your question is, what can leaders do to address this fear or doubt in the organization, right? Mm. And I think generally, yeah. like, uh, people are feeling uh, demotivated, right? Sometimes not just within the organization, because of whatever is happening outside will have an impact uh, in the workplace. Absolutely. Uh, I think for, for leaders, the most important thing to do is to acknowledge these feelings that are occurring for themselves first. Um, uh, there is that tendency of, you know, wanting to do the best for the employees. But before you can, you know, make sure the mask is on for somebody else, you have to have the mask on for yourself. Mm. So uh, a lot of leaders that we speak to, they, you know, they, they tend to ask that question, how do we communicate this? How do we prevent the fear? As they're asking me these questions, they have that tone of fear and anxiety in their voices. Mm. And so it doesn't matter what you say. If you have that tone or that experience going on in you and it's not been addressed yet, uh, it doesn't matter what you say, it's just definitely going to reach the other person as if you are definitely not in congruence with what it is that you're trying to say. Right. So first things first, I think um, leaders definitely need to take a little bit of time to just address and acknowledge this. And quite a fair few of them actually had big hopes for 2020. Right. Um, uh, there, there, was this, uh, there was this major trend of transformation that has been going on the past few years. Mm. And a lot of them have had major plans as to how they're going to transform the organization this year uh, with stretch goals, with restructuring, with uh, a different business model. And then wham, bam, right? Yeah. Um, come January, <laughs> whatever they had intended for, whatever they had planned for, whatever investment they had put in for the transformation will definitely not hold. It has no longer any weight at all. It's a totally different context by which you're operating. Yeah, so, so definitely first things first, acknowledge it. Um, second thing, I think really sitting down um, and being very clear about what this means or doesn't mean for the, for the organization. Mm. Um, there are a lot of conversations uh, with regards to prediction as to how long this is going to impact the economy or, or the industry. Mm. Some say three months, some say six months. Um, I think there was a report that just came out today from Singapore that it will be up until the end of the year. Oh. Um, yeah, but, but these are all just opinions right mm. so who knows who knows the, the truth the predictions without you know real modeling or yep. um you know historic ways of being able to predict the, the, there are no historic ways of being able to predict this so anyone who's predicting it in my opinion um is just having an opinion right so for organizations sitting down being clear about what this means or doesn't mean can be extremely valuable and i think for the first time organizations need to not have five-year goal, two-year goal, it probably is just a... Monthly goal monthly or a weekly goal. goal. Exactly, exactly. So I think being very clear about the longevity of their vision and um, how that is translatable with regards to what employees can control and do for mm. a very short spurts of, 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 of time uh, mm. would be very important. Mm. Um, another thing, a third thing would be, would be that would be really important is to be quite clear about what kind of feelings you want your employees to have. So right. a lot of the airline industries, for example, obviously impacted. Yep. Um, this is a time where um, the incongruence is at probably its peak, where you're probably telling employees, don't be scared, you know, just make sure that you do your level best, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, if you're going to have at the back end, you know, consultants walking in and out or, you know, 
um, all the big shots kind of hanging out together, having conversations. Uh, and then the conversations lead to a decision where employees, um, you know, they're going to be cuts in job positions or cuts in salaries. Uh, that's highly incongruent with what it is that you're trying to tell people. So on one hand, uh, you know, just stay focused, keep working hard. On the other hand, you're kind of cutting uh, positions and salaries that will be really um, extremely confusing, mm. very, very confusing time. So I think being very clear about what feelings you want people to have and being congruent to it through words and actions will be quite important. All right. You know, we talk about uh, the VUCA world and we are really facing it at the moment. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, and I guess um, when you talk about it, even for the leaders, they're probably going through the five stages of grief at the moment and to acknowledge it. And then do you think it's wise to share how you're feeling? I mean, even if you're uncertain, and to give the assurance that we'll, we're in this together. We're in this to brave this together, um, you know, and we have uh, the assurance of how as a team, United will be able to do these things. I know it sounds very rah-rah, but, you know, that kind of assurance that it's okay, uh, we'll be in it together is an important message. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. I think the first thing that an organization needs to do or a leader needs to do is decide what kind of outcomes uh, they want from this entire experience. So being mm. very clear about what it is that you want at the beginning of the day. Mm. Is it revenue that you're looking at? Is it about unity? Mm. Um, is it about a safe space still, regardless of whatever happens? Um, is it about, I need to do what is best for shareholders? I'm not 100% sure what um, what the outcomes are, which is why when I mentioned earlier, leaders need to be very clear about what it means and doesn't mean for the organization. Mm. Only then you decide your languaging. Mm. because you're going to have every, everyone's going to be hanging on to any and every word that you, that comes out of your right. mouth. So you have to be really uh, careful. I guess the next most important thing is what you mentioned earlier. It's, it's, it's very comforting knowing that a leader is also experiencing the same thing and is able to have that vulnerability to share it. I think it's really important. Mm. So what, what leaders could do is that even in times like this where they may have to take very drastic measures, and I think a lot of them will be forced to, Mm. Um, you know, the ones who have prepared well and they have enough reserves, they may not have to, but the rest of us who, I mean, the rest of them who, who, who may not have expected this and, you know, times are already hard, they may have to take quite drastic measures. Mm. One thing that I learned is that, um, okay, it doesn't matter what the outcome is. So even if it is that you need to, you know, you know cut pay or cut um, positions and stuff like that, I, I guess the next most important thing is to inject how you want to be doing it. Mm. So you may just want to say the tone and the emotional connection that I want to have is one of an empathetic response. Mm. So in light of that, yes, you can still say things like, you know, I, I, you know, it is a terribly, you know, um, uh, um, you know, uh, difficult time for everybody. And I feel the same way as well. I'm sure you do. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, blah, blah, blah. So I think be clear about the outcomes and then decide what kind of emotions or emotional connection you want to have. Mm. in that process and try not to leave the goal from uh, uh, separated from the emotion mm. okay if, if that makes sense right we'll continue our conversation yep. after this I'm speaking to Hetel Doshi from Osaik talking about uh, the butterfly effect stay tuned for more BFM 89.9You're listening to Race the Game. Good morning. I'm Frida Liu speaking to Hetel Doshi, uh, organizational psychologist from OSAIC. It was World Water Day yesterday, and uh, we're talking about you know what organizational leaders, uh, what leaders can do uh, right now. And you know, with the theme of World Water Day, it's to be water, my friends, as Bruce Lee would say. So, what are the yeah. ways in which leaders could potentially find themselves drowning? And what can, what are some tools that leaders can use to shift their own mindset to adapt? to this uh, external transformation? Um, so I think definitely one reason why leaders would be drowning is the lack of preparation of a crisis. Mm -hmm. um, granted, granted, there's no way anyone could have imagined that something like this would have happened. Mm. Uh, but it also shows that if you had a year or two years worth of reserves, um, for any kind of crisis, which most leaders should actually be thinking about, like in the next one or two years, 
I sh- not, what, not in the next one, two years, but should there be a crisis that lasts for one or two years, I should have, I should be prepared for it. Mm. And I think majority aren't. Mm. Majority aren't. I think there, there is this sense of optimism for 2020 and beyond or optimism for using right. technology as an enabler, which is like the most famous thing that people are saying. Mm. Um, and I think, yeah, so one of the major reasons why they're drowning is this lack of preparation of a crisis. Mm. Um, the second thing, you know, second reason why they would be drowning is because the news is fluctuating mm. so radically mm. and so quickly that being able to have clarity in a space of chaos is really difficult. Mm. Um, I'll, I'll talk maybe about a tool later, but um, one way we could drown and one way a lot of leaders would drown is just having thoughts that are flippant. Mm. So keep having these flippant thoughts, like, should I do this? Should I do that? Um, the second, the third thing, so apart from lack of preparation, lack of clarity, I think the third major thing is um, courage and conviction. Mm. So this is a time where leaders probably really need to sit down and you can't trust anyone but yourself. Right in my opinion, and you just really have to sit down and take that step of courage to do what is the most important thing for the organization right now, be it, you know, just a vulnerable conversation with everyone or taking drastic action of having to, I'm not saying that the only thing to do now is to to, to let go of staff, but if that is something you need to do, then maybe that's something you need to do as well. Mm. So three things, I guess, the lack of preparation, lack of clarity and lack of uh, courage or conviction. And the third thing that they would be drowning themselves in is already, you know, in the past few years when I engage with leaders, a typical thing that they say is, you know, when I tell my, you know, I'm trying to drive the organization in, in, in X, Y, Z, but nobody is, you know, it's very hard for employees just to do what it is that I tell them to do. So this time around, I think it's going to be even worse mm-hmm. when leaders are trying to direct their employees to do certain things or behave in certain ways. If it hasn't been done before and there's lack of followership, in the past, it's going to be even worse now. So I think that's going to be even more frustrating for um, for leaders. Right. And um, with regards to tools, mm. um, Fried, I just got back from Bhutan, and I think it was one of the most amazing experiences that I've ever had in my life. Um, you know, one tool that we, we keep talking about in Malaysia, um, but a tool that really... Um, Underutilized. You know, what, sorry? Underutilized. Yeah, totally, totally underrated, mm. underutilized, mm. and maybe more gimmicky than mm. um, more of a marketing tool rather than a real practical wisdom kind of a tool is um, meditation and breathing. Mm. Um, you know, the whole body is out of whack right now. All yeah. your cells are yeah. screaming in, 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 in fear or maybe even in rage and anxiety. And um, meditation and breathing has been proven to be one of the most powerful things to do to be able to, you know, um, reach a state in your core where you are essentially not only calm, but very clear. Mm. Um, And that's an extremely valuable tool. One of the things that a lot of the Buddhist monks, and, you know, I I really hope this isn't taken as a religious thing, Mm. um, uh, because the practice of it is non-religious. The practice of it is the law of life. And Mm. in this case, what they do is they meditate on the concept of impermanence, Mm. Um, which is basically nothing is permanent. And the life, um, the longevity of things now is getting shorter and shorter. So the ability to understand this law of life now, this new norm or this new reality that things are really not here for a long haul, things are really here for as long as it can be, and, mm. and it's a very short period of time. So meditating and, meditating and breathing on this concept of impermanence and how you still want to thrive in an economy, in an environment, in a culture of shortness or short-sightedness of sorts is mm. going to be very, very critical. So right. I think com- combining breathing with visioning is very important because it does activate a part of the brain that is not really utilized right now. And I think it's very valuable for people to actually look up the reticular activating system or the prefrontal cortex. Mm. This is where really, you know, it, it's a time of wisdom Mm. Um, and breathing, meditating, and visioning um, a, 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 an opportunity of, of still being able to thrive is critical. Right. Um, another very important tool to use um, that I think organizations really 
are far behind in is using data and analytics from an external and internal environment to make decisions rather than just using intuition can be extremely, extremely valuable. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, a lot of companies that I work with with regards to HR analytics and being able to use it when push comes to shove isn't there. So I think a lot of people will be scrambling right now uh, mm-hmm. what the data is on the employees, who might need to be in what position, blah, blah, blah. All of that is, is not in the right order. Right. Uh, to bring the water analogy back in, water can be very volatile, like waves on the ocean, or it can be frozen stiff like an iceberg. Uh, one could say the same of ineffective leaders. Some are ineffective because they're too volatile, but some have such a fixed mindset that it doesn't allow them to innovate. So between the two, do you have any advice to become a leader who meets somewhere in the middle? Uh, essentially, how do you balance being adventurous, innovative, uh, with being cautious slash prepared? Um, you know, I know you talked about meditation earlier, but what other ways? Yeah, I don't think uh, there is a balance between being adventurous, innovative, and being cautious and prepared. I think that just leaves you in a, a mode of, um, what do you call it, like a cha-cha-cha kind of a thing. You take one step forward and then two steps mm-hmm. back and then mm-hmm. a step forward. So you don't know where you're going. You have to You have to be... So I don't think it is about being either or. I think it's just being about clear about your identity and... Um, very, very clear about the identity that you're going to have in scenarios like this. Mm. And then, you know, rallying, just like water, right? Mm. So being very clear about the direction and the identity of this water and then, um, you know, finding a way to rally everybody in that direction. Um, yeah, I've, I've always been struggling with this concept of balance. Mm. Um, I, don't, I don't think there is balance. I think there's just clarity because for that, you know, it's just different for different people. Um, yeah, and I found many a times leaders wanting to be adventurous, but at the same time being cautious, and then they, they go nowhere with it, if that makes sense. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay, let's yeah. bring in another definition of flow. Uh, this is Mihai uh, Chikisa Mihai. He's a researcher who coined, the term, who coined the term flow as an expression of a state in which people are so involved in activity that nothing else seems to matter. Now, how could a state like this be potentially beneficial for employees? Yeah, just, just to bring in the definition of flow again. Mm. Flow is basically a sense of being so immersed that nothing else around you or everything else around you ceases to exist. Hmm. So if you want to parallel it, um, Frida, it could be like the first date that you had with like a really, really, you know, somebody that you really liked and you went fine dining mm-hmm. and it was just the two of you in that conversation, nothing else existed around you. Hmm. So flow is an incredible, you know, peak state of sort. And um, an example that you would see in this is with uh, Formula One race car drivers. Mm. They're, they're, in, they're basically in a zone. Nothing else exists and they're just going. Hmm. Um, so it is you know, uh, it, it, is, it is quite, it's not easy, but it's easier for a state of flow to be achieved as an individual. Mm. But can you imagine if you have to get an organization in a state of flow? I mean, that's, well, right. that's highly impossible, number one. And mm. number two, even if you tried, you would really have to have a good process to be able to get there. Um, mm. You could see a state of flow in organizations such as um, Formula One, uh, mm-hmm. where they're all technical engineers who, you know, when, when, the, when the car stops at the pit stop and then you get all of these, like, mm-hmm. I don't know, 10, 15 engineers coming in and fixing the car in just two seconds, mm-hmm. that is a state of flow. And that is amazing to watch. Like, just everybody knows everything about what everybody else is doing and mm-hmm. everybody is meeting what they need to do in that specific moment, that's amazing. And mm. you could say that, okay, maybe they're really intelligent and blah, 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 um, and they were able to do it. But if you look at the Dabawalas, do you, have you heard yes, of the Dabawalas? Yes, yes. Right. For people yes. who don't know, maybe you can explain. Yeah, so the Dabawalas, uh, you know, I think they, 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 they claimed um, you know, the highest level of um, Accuracy. awesomeness from mm. Harvard Business, uh, the Harvard, Harvard Business School as well. And there's a big case done about um, this group of Dabawalas who basically um, feed a population in India with lunch boxes. And these are all people who are, um, so the servers or, or, or the ones running it, they're all, they're not educated, they're illiterate, um, but they have found a way to be very, very clear about the purpose. And everybody is very clear about what they're doing, what each other is doing. 
and they've trialed it out so many times that it's perfection. Mm. So whether you're a super smart group, you know, as an organization or whether you're you know, close to being illiterate, it doesn't matter. But what matters is um, I think if an organization wants to, wants to move in a f- state of flow, they have to be super clear about everything, mm. which is why I can't emphasize enough. I think over and over again, the third episode now, clarity is um, really, really important. Mm. Um, and um, extremely valuable to achieve that state of flow, but extremely hard as well. Right. Are there moments when, you know, when you talk about this flow, how it cannot, uh, sometimes it might not be a good thing, uh, you know, of being in the zone, how this can be negative? Is it to the point like you, you've got your, you're doing some things, but your head is in the sand like an ostrich and you don't know what's going on? Is that is that the potential danger also of uh, being in the flow? Yeah, definitely. I think you need to get your head out regularly and you need to put your head up quite high as well. So being in a state of flow, um, well, first and foremost, you can't always be in a state of flow. You just, it's impossible. It's, 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 um, it's, 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 um, as it's not humanly possible to always be in a state of flow. A state of flow is kind of achieved when you're doing something. When you stop doing it, you kind of get out of it. So uh, why you need to get out of that zone as well is to make sure that your surroundings are well looked after. So imagine like, you know, a guy, girl going out for that, that, that date and they're just so immersed in each other that they fail to notice whatever else is going around. You could have a fire or you could have a lot of things going on on the, the periphery. And if you don't remove yourself from the state of flow and understand what's going on in the external environment, then you, you're obviously not going to be in the best space. And I think majority of uh, employees Mm. Um, majority of employees are in a state of flow in the sense of they only understand what is going on in the organization Mm. and that's where they're flowing. They're immersed in that, but they don't understand potentially um, what is going on in the reality of the world. And, um, you know, in this case, I think majority of the time I hear leaders saying, I think our staff are being extremely complacent and they're really taking for granted um, what is going on in the external environment and how much we're doing to protect them as well. So, yeah, definitely... Keep your head out, keep your head around and you know, go back to flow. Keep your head out, keep your head around, go back to flow. Right. Uh, what are your concluding thoughts around this topic? Um, I think maybe one big thing is um, it, it's really a plea to all leaders that your character and your principles during these difficult times will determine not only who you are uh, to others, but also to yourselves, your families and the next generation. So please, please do a check-in with your, your moral character. Please do a check-in with your principles. Mm. Um, it is at these times where literally the impact of anything that you do will be tenfold or hundredfold. Mm. Um, and I don't think it's just me. I think it's, uh, I think it's everyone who has been listening to the news and mm. listening to what's going on in the world that um, will plead really for, um, you know, moral character and principles to, to be upheld in these times. All right. Uh, thanks for being with us. Uh, Hetel Doshi, organizational psychologist from OSYC uh, in our Butterfly Effect series. And, uh, you know, just a, a message for us, you know, being World Water Day yesterday to, to be water, my friends. You've been listening to Racy Game, BFM 89.9. BFM celebrates World Water Day, brought to you by Indah Water Consortium, new life for water. Thank you for listening to this podcast. To find more great interviews, go to bfm.my or find us on iTunes. BFM 89.9, The Business Station.